Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to be going over 5.1.4, which is called Spell It Out. This is where we start to work with lists. And there's actually a little bit of something else that's a little weird that we're going to have to get used to, is that you have two files now, a scratchpad.py and a unit test. And we'll talk about what that is in a little bit. But let's look at the assignment. So in this one, we want to write a function called spell name. I can blow this up a little bit. That takes a name as an input. So as soon as I see a function as spell name, I come down here. Yep, there it is. And takes a name as its input. Name, input. Now we usually call these a parameter, but they're calling it input. So know that Jessica is a single input and it's in quotes. Then returns a list, which is this arrow function means return. And here is a list of letters which correspond to the person's name, where each character in their name is an element. So J is an element, E is an element, S is an element, and so on. So first off, write a function spell name. So right away, we want to write a function. Now, I'm not going to do exactly what's in this one, but I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to do, um, let's do word to list, because that's what we're doing. And let's just give it a word as a parameter. So this is a parameter. It's not the word Jessica. These are very specific words, Jessica and Ariel. When you guys make a function with def, you want to make this as generic as possible. So it can fit a lot of different situations. So in this case, it is word. And then it says, then returns a list where each character in their name is an element. So I want to go ahead and convert this to a list. And what we can use is this um, function called list. Notice that it turns blue. Very good to think about when you guys are typing stuff to see if it's an actual keyword. And list takes one parameter, and that is the string that you would like to convert to a list. And in this case, it's a word. And this returns a list, so I should store it. Let's call it word list equals. So now it's going to take the word, we're going to convert it to a list, and then we're going to store that list inside of this variable so that we can use it later on. So let's go ahead and call the function word to list, and let's give it the word barn. Let's go ahead and run it, and when we run it, you should notice that nothing seems to have happened. And that is because we are not printing anything out here. So our goal is to return something, but sometimes it's just really nice to print stuff out to begin with inside of our function. And then at the very end, we can go ahead and return what it needs to return. So first off, let's just go ahead and print out what word is just to make sure that we're understanding what's happening here. So if we run it, word holds the word barn. So right here, we're calling the function barn and with barn as the parameter. Therefore, when it comes up here, it's going to look something like this. Word is storing the word barn. And therefore, when we print word, we're really printing the word barn, which is why barn shows up here. All nicey nice, but our job was to convert it to a list. So that's why we have this function. This function is supposed to turn the word into a list and then store it inside of word list. So let's go ahead and print word list and see what happens. And there we go. We have barn. So B is the first element, second, third, and fourth element. Now, when we talk about elements, what we're really talking about is what's inside of it. And when we talk about a position, we really should be talking about an index. An index is where it's positioned, but the first position in a list is zero. So this has the zero index. So if we go ahead and I'm going to do, no, we'll just do, this is the zero index. This is the one index, two index, and three index. The reason why this is important is because what if we want to just print the letter A? So if we want to print the letter A, we need to get it from the word list list. So we'll do word list and then a bracket. Then a bracket, inside of the bracket, we need to put an index 
or its position. And this A is at index 1. So now if I run this, it should print out A. And if we do a 3, it'll print out the N, because that's the third index. And if we do a 4, which is a common mistake, we will get this error here, where it talks about index error, which is exactly what this is. That's an index. And it says, list index out of range. That means we are trying to go too far. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, and we're trying to get the fourth index. That does not exist, hence out of range. Okie dokie. Now, we are printing out, let's go back here. We are printing out the list barn, which is exactly what we needed. But our job is to return this word list. So all I need to do is remove the word print and type the word return. I don't need the parentheses anymore because it's not a function. And if we run it, we'll see that nothing happens because we're no longer printing. But what we should do, or actually the biggest thing to understand here is where does it return word list to? Like where does this go if it's returning it? So I need to look up here where it says the name of the function, which is word to list. So I look down here where it says word to list, and all of this is going to be replaced by whatever I'm returning. In this case, it's barn in the brackets, which each letter is an element. So all of this is going to be replaced. And when it gets replaced, let's go ahead and actually type out what it's going to be. So it's going to be, do I want to do it here? No, let's do it right above it. It's going to be B. B, A, R, and N. So this is what is right here, because that's what word list equals. So therefore, I'll delete this now. Therefore, when I return this, this gets replaced by what's being returned. So we have just this right here. Now, if I just write a list like that, it's pretty useless. What I should really be doing, I should, I should be storing it inside of a variable so that I can use it later on in my program. So this is how we get information outside of this function into the main part of our program. So we took it from this little compartment right here, this little function, all the way to the outside. And we stored it inside of a list or a variable. So what we need to do is go back to what we had. And knowing that this is going to be the barn in a list, I'm going to do my list right here. And now my list should hold. What uh, we made up here, which is barn. So my list is barn just like that. Now, if I do check code, this will not uh, work well um, for the most part, because I said spell name isn't uh, the name of the function. So. The difference here is Scratchpad is what we've been normally working with. When we hit run, like this is what we've been working with the whole time, scratchpad.py. It might not have been called that, but that's what it was. And even check code would go to scratchpad.py and check out stuff. But now that's no longer the case. Run does still go with scratchpad.py, but check code goes with unit test. Unit test only takes in the function definition. This is not the function definition. This is the function definition. Oops, we're going to get rid of this up here. This is the function definition right here. So I'm just going to copy this part, go over to my unit test and paste it. And then when I hit check code, this is the code that will run. So test stuff out over here, hit run to see if it works. And then when you're satisfied that it does work, copy this, go to your unit test, paste it in. Bob's your uncle. Happy life, happy coding. All right, everybody. I hope that helps. Take care. Bye-bye.